Projector screen has been one of the most ignored element in your home theater system and the reason why we ignore it because we are so much involved in the technical configuration of your amplifier, projector, speakers that we just do not want to give attention to the screen because we feel okay screen is screen is just going to give you an image reflection and how does it matter. But guess what? Your projector screen is one of the most important element in your home theater system along with the speakers, projector because this is going to actually show you the picture in which you are going to be immersed or engrossed while enjoying that home cinema experience. Now, if you are with me till now, make sure to hit the like button because I know you all have been ignoring the fact about the projector screen. So let us know if this video is reaching out to the right audience by liking this particular video. And at the same time, if you have got any queries that you would want to ask us, then make sure to check the link in the description as well as the comment that is pinned in this particular video, wherein you can reach out to us and ask your questions, which we can actually select in our talk show series, which is the Get Help with Tanmay Mehta series, wherein I answer three questions every week over a video so that it can reach out to more audience who may have the similar queries. So feel free to use this particular link to address your queries and let us jump into the projector screen so that when you shop for home theaters from today, you will consider screen as one of the most important element. Now there are three types of projector screen that you can use in a home environment. Let us look at them. The number one type of the screen is a manual screen. It is also called as InstaLock screen. What do we mean by InstaLock and how does it work? Well, you have got a casing typically on the top and the screen comes down using a rod or a hook which is there in the middle. So when you pull down the screen and you hold it for 3-4 seconds, it locks at that particular uh, location and when you want to further release the screen back up, you just give a small jerk so that the screen starts rolling back into the casing. This uh, type of screen is called as manual or insta lock screen and is good enough to use when it is under 100 inches diagonal size. Now the reason why I'm saying 100 inches, cause beyond 100 inches, the fabric weight is high. And when you constantly make the screen go up and down, by putting the tension in the middle, the screen starts getting V grooves, which will not give you a good reflection of the image from the projector. Due to which, below 100 inches, it's good enough. But when you try to go beyond 100 inches, try to avoid manual screens and try going in for the electric motorized screen. Now, electric motorized screen are the screens wherein you perform the same operation, but only this time with the remote control. Now, these motorized screens can be of tubular motor as well as synchronous motors. So these are the two types of motors. So synchronous motor is not necessarily a motor, it's actually a rotator which is fit at one particular end of the screen casing and that moves in a gear mechanism. So cause it's a gear mechanism, it will not be very very smooth as much as the tubular screen would be and at the same time, it will be a little cost effective because the tubular screen has a proper tube based motor inside the casing due to which the operation is smooth and the longevity of that particular tubular motorized screens is also long. So when you are falling prey to the online screens which are showing you crazy prices and your home theater expert is quoting you some other high prices, then make sure to check the motor type before you really get into a mode wherein okay why are these screens you know so cheap wherein you are quoting me so high. So make sure to understand the logic behind the screens that you are being quoted. At the same time, the motorized screen has got another version which is called a tap tension screen. Now a tap tension screen is wherein you have got strings on both the sides which stretches the fabric so that the fabric does not move and you get a flat image on the screen. Just to give you a small example, imagine this to be your motorized screen. This is a small casing on the top which is where the screen starts getting folded. Now when the screen comes down, as you can see, due to the air, it will have vertical folds as well as the screen will move like this as well. Now, the same screen, but with that tap tension strings on both the sides will be stretched from the sides, which means that the vertical folds will not happen on this tap tension screens. And even if they move, they will move like this in a, in a form of pendulum, which is back and forth. So these tap tension motorized screens is something which you can use if you're told your screen is not touching to the wall or does not have any support and if you need a very very nice stretched image on the screen 
Now, typically manual and motorized screens are good enough to use in a living room, bedroom application, wherein post the usage of the screen, you just want the wall to be clean and you want your uh, TV or your uh, mirror frames or any artwork to be highlighted. So motorized screens and manual screens are best used in these environments. And the third type of the screen that you can use, which is personally my favorite, is the fixed frame screen. A fixed frame screen comes with a stretched fabric from all the four sides, which means that there is not going to be a single fold or a grease on the screen. And at the same time, it is going to be fixed on the wall, just like your TV. So these screens ideally are more used in the home theater rooms, which are dedicated, closed, does not have a lot of dust coming in. But fixed frame screens is something that you need to buy if you're really looking for a good projector screen in your home theater room. Nowadays, people are also opting for fixed frame screens in the living room, typically with the ultra short throw projectors, because the fixed frame screen is nothing but like a TV on the wall. So as you go for a 75 inches TV, wherein you're used to seeing that black piece on the wall forever, or ALR fabric screen is also something which can be fixed on the wall. And the fixed frame screen is something that you will need for it. One of the common fears that I see a lot of uh, Indians have with regards to the projector screens is that we have so much of dust problem. What if the fabric gets spoiled? Well, you can just wipe it off with a dry cloth and nothing really happens with the, to the screen. Until unless you have got small kids who might scribble something on the fabric, which will then further spoil the image once, you know, forever. So uh, if that is the case, then I can understand to avoid the fixed frame screen. But given a choice, go for fixed frame screen if you're planning for it in the home theater room. And if it is a a living room or a bedroom wherein having the fixed frame is not possible, then and then go for the motorized or the manual install lock screen. So this was the three, these were the three types of the screen. Now let us look at the specifications that really matter while selecting the screens. Now the very first specification that really matter while shopping for projector screen is the reflection gain. Reflection gain is basically a coefficient which is going to determine how much is the reflection of light coming in from the surface of the screen. Just the way we calculate weight in kgs or grams or we calculate height or the distance in feet or inches or kilometers, the reflection of any surface is measured in reflection gain. So typically a white fabric screen that we all are used to looking around has a reflection gain of either 1.0 or higher than that which means that if the reflect if the projector light is falling onto it it will reflect almost 100% of the same light back to the environment so that pretty much defines that okay high reflection gain is equal to high brightness which means that if i am looking at in a living room which is going to have a lot of brightness i need to go for a high brightness screen so that's a pretty much simple logic for it but there are certain other screens which have got a little less reflection gain but they are good in giving you the contrast. And that is something which actually brings me out to the second specification that you need to consider while shopping projector screen, which is the fabric color and the fabric type. Now fabric colors, you have seen there's white fabric, then there is the silver fabric that is also there, which is primarily used for 3D. Then you have the gray color fabric, which is used for ALR screens or to get high contrast ratio screens. So these are the various colors that you get in the screen. And when we look at the fabric type, what I mean by that is you have got a normal matte white high gain. Then you have got a perforated fabric, which is an acoustic perforated. Then you have got an acoustic woven screen, wherein a woven like technology is used to get the sound out when you're putting speakers behind this particular screen. And you have got these gray color screens. So these are the various types of fabric that are available in the screen. Now the details about all these fabrics, where are they used? How are they used? You know, which one to be considered? If you're really get, you know, looking for that information and want us to cover on that, then make sure to share that in the comments so that we can create a separate video only on the fabrics and the types of it, along with seeing how the image would be on the screen. So if you are looking forward for it, let us know in the comment below. At the same time, do not forget to subscribe to our channel because that will keep you updated about the upcoming videos. 
Now, the third specification that you need to consider while shopping for projector screens is the viewing angle. Now, what is viewing angle? Let's assume that you are sitting right in front of the screen where the projector is installed and you are sitting in the same line. Now, this perpendicular line is wherein you will be having the maximum light coming across. But for people who are sitting in the corners, okay, they will have a little less brighter image. That is because the reflection, the viewing angle of the screen is a little less. So having more reflection angle screens will help you get larger audience in a wider format. And for that very reason, the viewing angle of the screen is yet another important specification which you need to consider while shopping for projector screens. With this, I hope that you have got enough information about the types of the screen and the specifications of the screen that you need to consider. And if this information has helped you, then make sure to hit the like button so that YouTube can find this uh, video and make it share with all the other relevant people as well. And in case you have got any other queries, as I mentioned at the start of the video, do check out the links in the description because that is where you can reach out to me. You can talk to my team, you can check for any inquiries as well as you can use a link which is shared to design an exclusive home theater system which is designed for your space, for your pockets and for your needs. So that's it from my end in this particular video guys. Stay subscribed because we are going to talk about these fabrics and we are going to check the image on various fabrics. How does it come across? So I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thank you once again for watching. Bye bye.